Hello and welcome to free internship for mechanical engineers, press tool design with Katia V5. In this video lesson, I am going to explain the step 3 of the strip layout design procedure. In this step, we are going to calculate the bridge dimensions. Before we get started, let's refresh our learnings on the blanking operation. Blanking is a shearing operation. The blank which is a useful product is sheared from the raw material. The raw material is a sheet metal strip. The force required for shearing is provided by the press machine. The profile of the punch will be the same as the profile of the blank. The profile of the die opening will also be same as the profile of the blank. We need certain extra raw material all around the punch for the blanking operation to happen. This extra raw material is called the bridge. I am sure all of you know what is manufacturing. Manufacturing is the process of converting raw material into finished product. What you are seeing on the screen is the raw material and the finished product. The raw material is a sheet metal of length 2.5 meters and width 1 meter. The finished product is the power screw support bracket of a car scissor jack. In this course, we are concerned only about the blanking operation. So, the finished product will be a blanked component. The unfolded view, what you are seeing on the drawing. As you can see on the screen, the component has to be blanked from the raw material. Refer to detail B. The orientation of the component on the raw material is done considering the grain direction. The grain direction on the component and the grain direction on the raw material has to match. To blank the component, we need to feed the raw material into the press tool. It is practically impossible to feed the entire raw material of length 2.5 meters and width 1 meter into the press tool. It is also not required. We will have to cut or slit the raw material sheet into strips. We can cut or slit the raw material along its length. Refer to detail D. We can also cut or slit the raw material along its width. Refer to detail C. The portion of the raw material which is cut from the sheet metal is called the strip. The sheet metal is slit using two circular cutters, the upper cutter and the lower cutter. Have a look at a short video which shows how sheet metal slit in a production plant. I am sure you observed the circular cutters. The input is the sheet metal and the output is sheet metal strips. The distance between the circular cutters can be adjusted so that the width of the strip is produced as per our requirement. Now we have two scenarios. The sheet metal can be slit along its length or the sheet metal can be slit along its width. Observe the orientation of the component or the blank in detail D and detail C. The direction in which the technician or the operator feeds the strip into the press tool is the direction of feed. The image on the left side of the screen is the strip produced by slitting the raw material along its length. The image on the right side of the screen is the strip that is produced by slitting the raw material along its width. Don't get confused with the orientation of the component. The orientation of the component is as per the requirement. Refer to detail D and detail C. Let's move forward. In this illustration, I have marked the component length and the component width. You can see there is certain extra raw material present in the direction of the feed. The extra raw material in the direction of the feed is called the feed bridge. We use a simple formula to calculate the value of the feed bridge. When the length of the component is less than or equal to 50 millimeters, the value of the feed bridge will be equal to the thickness of the component. The minimum value of the feed bridge will be 
1.6 millimeters. That is, when the length of the component is less than or equal to 50 millimeters, the value of the feed bridge cannot be less than 1.6 millimeters. If the length of the component is more than or equal to 51 millimeters and less than or equal to 150 millimeters, the value of the feed bridge will be 1.25 times the thickness. The minimum value of the feed bridge in this case will be 2.4 millimeters. If the length of the component is more than or equal to 151 millimeters and less than or equal to 250 millimeters, the value of the feed bridge will be 1.5 times the thickness. In this case, the minimum value of the feed bridge will be 3.2 millimeters. If the length of the component is more than or equal to 251 millimeters and less than or equal to 400 millimeters, the value of the feed bridge will be 1.75 times the thickness. In this case, the minimum value of the feed bridge will be 4.8 millimeters. As the length of our component is 62.5 millimeters, the value of the feed bridge will be 1.25 times the thickness. And the minimum value of the feed bridge should be 2.4 millimeters. Let's calculate the value of the feed bridge. Feed bridge is equal to 1.25 times the thickness. That is 1.25 into 3.15, which is equal to 3.9375 millimeters. As you can see in the illustrations, I have dimensioned the value of the feed bridge. You can observe in this illustration, there is extra raw material along the width of the strip. This extra raw material is called the edge bridge. The width of the strip will be equal to the component length or width depending on the orientation plus two times the edge bridge. We use a simple formula to calculate the value of the edge bridge. Edge bridge is a function of feed bridge. Edge bridge is equal to 1.2 times the feed bridge. Let's calculate the value of the edge bridge. Edge bridge is equal to 1.2 into 3.9375 millimeters, which is equal to 4.725 millimeters. Have a look at the illustrations. I have marked the values of the edge bridge. I have also marked the value of the strip width. That's all in this video lesson. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the discussion forum. If you are watching this video on YouTube, do comment your questions. Thanks.